أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويوافي مزيدا يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك سبحانك اللهم لا أحسن ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله خير نبي أرسله فرسله الله إلى العالم كله بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد صلاة وسلام دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين وأصيكم أيها المسلمون ونفس المذنبة في تقوى الله تعالى في السر والعلانية يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تفاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد My brothers and sisters in Islam I greet you with the greeting of peace and I also greet all our guests who are today amongst them is uh, the Honorable Carl Devine uh, and I want to talk to you today about taqwa, about God-fearingness, but it is not simply the idea of fear, but it is awareness, awareness that leads to action. It's a type of awareness that is cultivated. It's not something that just happens. It's something that we have to do. We have to take certain actions in order to cultivate this awareness of God in our hearts that then displays itself in our lives and in our social encounters. And this is called taqwa. Taqwa is to carry a blow. <clears throat> it means to be aware of the, the dangers, the dangers that are there in our lives. And to rely upon God. To rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God is the one who is our guide and our protector and then the one that we seek help from every day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe Fear, have awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is His right. And don't, don't die except in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In submission to God. Don't die except that you are in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The creator of the heavens and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Rahman, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسأله من في السماوات والأرض كل يوم هو في شأن All who are in the heavens and the earth, earth, they ask of him. Even if they don't ask explicitly, the state, their state of being asks, of him. Their state of being asks of him. The needs that we have ask of God every day, even if we don't explicitly ask. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that His mercy covers everything. Covers everything. Those who believe, those who disbelieve, those who do righteousness and those who don't do righteousness. But we want to take that hal, that state of being, and make it explicit, make it conscious. To ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. And the person who is aware, that's the taqwa, is awareness. كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَأْنٍ he is on an affair. I.e., God has a special, unique affair every single day. Every single day, God is on a special, has a special affair. And so, the believer is the one who is the person of their moment, the, their time. They are aware of the needs of the moment, and they address those needs. And this type of person is a person that in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uses a special term for a person who brings together two qualities. One is the flower of youthfulness, and the second is idealism. Idealism, principle. And that is a term that is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses which is called the fatha, and is encapsulated in a word called futuwa, which comes into, from Muslim, from Arab, Islamic countries, into Europe as chivalry. Chivalry is futuwa. It is the thing, it is this code of conduct that originally was understood to be the fattest, the person who is a knight, is a fattest, has these qualities of chivalry. And in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings together these two, these two concepts of youthfulness and idealism, of principle, in the word fatha. The fatha is a, is a youth who lives by his or her ideals, her principles. And that fata, in that fata, you know, fata is the is the female of fata. The fata and the fata, those are the ones who are aware of Allah subhanahu the needs of the moment. Kulla yawmin huwa fi shatn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a new affair every single day, every single moment. And the person who is the fata addresses the needs of the moment and of the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us examples of them. The first person that he talks about in terms of the fatha is Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham. Because he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about Ibrahim. It says, <clears throat> the people, when uh, Ibrahim had broken the idols, the people had gone off to their celebration. And he was there, he said, I was sick. And he stayed back behind with the idols. And then he broke all, he, he smashed every idol, except for one, okay? The biggest idol. So when the people came back, <clears throat> They said, what did you do to our gods? Okay? What did you do to our gods? And uh, he said that the, the, biggest, the, big, the biggest of them did it. The biggest of them did it. Okay? Ask them, ask all of the idols, ask the ones that are broken about whether the biggest one did it or not. You see that he's pointing to the to the paradoxicality of, and the, the absurdity of it all, right? And so Ibrahim is the feta, right? He's the one who sees the, 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 the idols of his time 
and he, had, he smashes them. The falsehoods of his time. He sees those falsehoods for what they are, and the absurdity of them. And he, he smashes those idols. And the absurdities of our time is the spread of lies that people will, the kadhab, a kadhab can never be a mu'min. Someone who is an inveterate liar can never be a believer, as the Prophet told us. The inveterate liar can never be a believer. Why? Because lying has so taken over their heart and mind that it has sealed the ability for them to ever see the sparks of divine blessing. And what's happening today is that lying and the inveterate lie have become commonplace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to stand up for what? For justice. Walau ala anfusikum. Even if it's what? Against yourself. Even if it is to your detriment, you still stand up for justice and what is right and what is true. But what's happening today is that if it hurts me, then I prefer to lie to save my own interests and put my own interests over the interests of society, of, of, of others. And this is diametrically opposed to God's message. Diametrically. So we can't just sit around and say, oh well, you know, I, I read, recently read a, you know, uh, an article in which it said that voters were just resigned to the fact that, well, things are going to be the way they are. It's just how it is. But Ibrahim السلام, didn't just say, oh, that's just how it is. I'm going to just let things be as they are. He saw the falsehoods of his time and he pointed them out. He pointed out the absurdity of them. And we can't just sit on the sideline and let absurdity reign. We have to be the people of truth, upholders of truth, even if it's against ourselves, even if it hurts us, even if it damages us. Because Ibrahim السلام, he stood up to the falsehoods of his time and he was what? He was thrown into a pit of fire for that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said to that fire, Kuni bardan wa salama ala Ibrahim. Be coolness and safety for Ibrahim. And when he came out of that fire, it was the most peaceful and beautiful experience he had ever had. Because we can't let fear prevent us from standing up for truth and justice and what is right. So this is the fatah. And the fatah. Allah SWT doesn't mention Hajar alayhi salam, Hagar, Hajar, with the term Fata, but she embodies, she embodied that. She embodied those principles of youthfulness and principle and idealism. Because when Ibrahim took her to Mecca and left her there, she wanted to know, did my Lord did, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you, to, are you just doing this because you don't like me, right? Which is completely against Abraham's character, Ibrahim's character. He wasn't a person who was actually, if you look at the Qur'an, he was very concerned with people. He was very careful about how, about others. He cared for others deeply. The way he dealt with his father in Iraq, the way he dealt with uh, uh, Lut and 
and the angels that were coming to destroy Lut, the, pe the people of Lut, and he was he cared about people, but <coughs> but when it came to God's command, he knew. And Hajar knew that if they trusted in God, that God would take care of their affairs. That God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would, would, would give them succor, would hold them, give them help, strength. And that only happens when a person stands up and risks, risks harm to themselves, for, for that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she was a fata. Even, what did she say? Even la yudli'una. Okay? He said, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to do this. So she said, what? Even la yudli'una. Then he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not forsake us. See, because her relationship, her protection was not Ibrahim. Her protection, first and foremost, was with God. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they had a relationship that was based on Iman. It was based on love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was a relationship that produced such amazing and beautiful results. The progeny of Ismail is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from the progeny of Ismail, of Ishmael. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are of the fitya, those who stand up, who see the, the challenges and the needs of the moment and they address them, and who stand for justice and that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akudu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah hadi wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu fa innahu huwa al-qafir. One of the aspects of the believers is that they support one another and they are concerned with the society that they live in. They're not only concerned with themselves. Because the person who is only concerned with himself, when God sends a punishment, he says, start with those ones. <coughs> start with the, 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 those who were, those who were, who, who, who were upright, but they only cared about themselves. They didn't care about others. They didn't care about others. So, just being upright by ourselves, in and of ourselves, is not enough. We have to care about society. We have to care about the well-being of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ And some, unfortunately, they take this to mean, like, well, you, you know, Muslims only help Muslims. And Muslims don't vote. <coughs> well, Muslims don't. And we have to really understand that any hukum shar'i has two aspects. There's a hukum taklifi and a hukum wadai. The wadai applies to the situation, the person, the people in the situation. It's a special type of arrogance to take the Qur'an and apply it to give a hukam when a person doesn't even know the sharia themselves. So don't, don't listen to this type of ignorance. 
Okay, when someone, when a scholar from overseas, if they want to come here and live here and then provide a hukam, that's fine. But they shouldn't take some video from overseas and say, that says, no, you can't participate in political involvement here in the United States. And they don't understand anything about the maslaha of our community. So this is a certain type of arrogance because a person who doesn't understand the hukum wadai of their situation, they cannot give fatwa. It's haram for them to give fatwa. Because they don't understand what the needs are. And people have made many injustices. Like some people they said, health insurance is haram. Well, because insurance in and of itself has some ghara, okay, some, there's riba in it, okay, but people were foregoing health insurance and then falling into intense and very extreme difficult financial situation. And the scholars, they came over here and they said, oh, I'm sorry, you know, we, we didn't understand the situation very well. No, yes, in this situation, yes, you should take ins have health insurance because it's, you know, well, the situation dictates it. The needs of people dictate that. Why then were you giving a hukam over there for something that you didn't understand over here and creating volume? That is not permissible. So don't take these fatwas from overseas that don't understand the situation here. We have to address, we do have to respect scholars, we do have to respect scholarship, and we have to ask those who know, as Allah subhanahu wa said, but don't think that someone who doesn't understand what the needs are of the community here can tell, can, can give a hukum about what our involvement or non-involvement should be here in the United States. May Allah guide us and give us strength. <coughs> Let's turn to him in, in dua. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, fi al-akhirati hasana, wa qina adab al ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم لا تجعل لنا في هذا اليوم ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا عسيرا إلا يسرته ولا حاجة إلا قضيته اللهم اغفر لنا والذين سبقونا بالإيمان اللهم اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اللهم انصر إخواننا في كل مكان اللهم وحد شملهم اللهم يسر أمورهم اللهم احفظهم يا الله يا حفيظ يا أرحم الراحمين يا غفور الرحيم اللهم اللهم قوي أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه فعز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمرك بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه فعز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما تذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة